Hey, yo, what's up, what's up, guys? Zaid here with another episode of Zaid's Experience. So today I'm going to be making a video for all my carnivores out there. I know it sounds like I've been neglecting you guys with all this fasting carnivore and all this other stuff, but I can assure you guys that I'm still going to take care of you. And today's video is going to be regarding the carnivore diet. So stick around, guys. Today I'm going to answer some of the most common questions that I get when it comes to the carnivore diet what it is and some of the common misconceptions so stick around and we'll check those out so a quick little announcement before we start so please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and push that notification bell if you guys haven't already done so it really helps out the channel it helps me know that you guys are liking the content and if you have any suggestions on what content i should have in this channel please go ahead and leave it down there in the comment section below moving on so the carnivore diet it's been out for a while now and a lot of people have barely started to kind of pick up on it it's been getting quite a bit of momentum as of very recently but a lot of people still don't know what it is so whenever i do tell them that i practice or i do a carnivore diet or that i have a carnivore way of living they often kind of either do a little face or you know have their own mentality about it which is perfectly fine they're not educated in regards to it and i wasn't either at one point first of all what is a carnivore diet carnivore diet is basically a diet based on mostly animal products it's as simple as that it's eating all animal products so that means no carbs no vegetables and it's basically just meats or animal products and water and that's technically it. Sure, there's variations. There's what some people might call bastardized versions of it. I have my own kind of bastardized version of it or what I like to call a bastardized version of the carnivore diet, but it's all kind of the same idea. It's all around the same general area or ballpark. So the first question I get is, what do you eat in the carnivore diet? What are the things that you can eat? This is quite simple. It basically has to be all animal products. These include, but are not limited to, fish, chicken, pork, red meat, organ meats, or what some people might call nose to tail, eat the entire animal in and out, eggs, milk, yogurt. Basically, as little as processed, if any processing at all, is technically considered good to go on the carnivore diet. So whenever you tell people that, they get a little skeptical about several things and with really good reason. There there's, hasn't been a lot of people that have been practicing this carnivore diet. So whenever you say that to somebody, they usually get super skeptical about it. And the, for, the question that usually follows after that is, am I gonna be fully covered nutritionally? Like, am I gonna be able to get all the nutrition that I require from just meat alone? And the answer is actually yes. Surprisingly, meat is the most bioavailable form of nutrient-dense food there is on the planet. And the most nutrient-dense thing known to man that is actually super bioavailable to us is liver. Liver is nature's multivitamin. It is packed with a bunch of minerals and essential vitamins that we require. Just because something has a bunch of nutrients, a bunch of vitamins, and it doesn't mean they are gonna be used by us. There doesn't mean they're gonna be absorbed. So when something is very bioavailable, it means that it can be absorbed quite easily. So anything that comes from meat, organ meats, or any animal products, is super bioavailable. It can be absorbed quite easily. The body knows what to do with it. So this is one of the main problems with plants. They do have a bunch of vitamins and minerals on them, but they cannot be absorbed as easily as some of the vitamins and minerals found in meat, organ meats, and other products that derive from animals. So yes, it is very, very possible to get a full nutritional spectrum from just a carnivore diet. This is why a lot of people while on the carnivore diet recommend eating nose to tail. So in short, yes. Now, after saying that, there's another question that usually comes by and it is, will I get backed up? Will I not be able to poop for several days? So as my girlfriend would call it, you would get the poop frights. You would not poop at all. Um, and the answer to that is no. A lot of people, actually, quite the contrary to what people believe, they start to actually go to the restroom quite a bit their first couple of days. So let me give you both of the scenarios. So one of the scenarios is 
if you come from a background where you've done a ketogenic diet or you've done some kind of high fat diet, your body knows what to do with higher amounts of fat because usually um, what you would ideally eat in this carnivore diet would be a diet that's compromised of a good portion of lean meat to fat ratio. That would ensure that you could get a proper nutrition because a lot of the actual nutrients are stored in the fat. So if you've had a ketogenic background, if you've had any high fat diet, your body knows how to process all the fat. And so you do okay in the first couple of days and your body kind of goes along with it if you've never done the carnivore diet, but you don't get massive diarrhea. If anything, you just start going to the restroom a little bit less and a little bit less but not because you get backed up, but because there's a lot less waste. There's no carbs and there's no excess, especially if you're eating to satiety. It is really, really hard to overeat in this diet. So if you're coming from a ketogenic background, it is super easy to transfer over. And yeah, you, you'll notice that you go a little bit less to the restroom, but it's because you have a lot less waste. Now, if you've never done a ketogenic diet, if you've never done a high fat diet and you're cutting off straight off of you're cutting off all the carbs in your life and you're just saying, boom, 100% carnivore. If you do that, what people tend to report is that because of the high amounts of fat that they're consuming in comparison to the food that they were eating before, they start reporting that they get very loose stool, diarrhea for at least a week. And this is very, very common. In any diet that requires you to eat high amounts of fat, you will start going to the restroom a lot more and it does look like diarrhea. So if you are starting this carnivore diet, I recommend you take it easy on the fat the first couple of days. And yes, the first week is almost what I call a ticket of entry week. Like once you get past the first week, you'll be perfectly good. But yes, those are the two cases. If you come from a fat, fat adapted background, you won't have that much of a problem. You will know how things are and you won't be backed up. You will know that you will only be going to throw out basically, because that's what poop is, it's just waste. Whatever you haven't been using and on a carnivore diet, there's not much that you do not use. In a regular diet, a lot of the leaves don't get processed properly. A lot of the carbohydrates don't get processed properly. And so what does the body do? It has to get all that out of the body in one way or another. With a carnivore diet, it technically tends to use everything. So hence, you don't get a lot of stool. Now in the other scenario, as I mentioned, you get both of these. The other one, you will probably get diarrhea. I got diarrhea for the first couple of days. Actually, it took me about a solid nine days to kind of get used to it and start to get the fat ratios uh, under control because it is kind of a trial and error. So. You get both of those and trust me, in none of those situations, you get backed up. So once again, the answer is no. Now the next common question that I get right after this is how much meat should I be eating every day? And the answer is eat to satiety, eat till you feel satiated. You cannot overeat in a carnivore diet. It is really, really hard to overeat on a carnivore diet. It is not the same as pounding three bowls of noodles and you say, yeah, I can still keep on going, you know? but I have to stop because I know that's just way, way too much. It's an inhumane amount of food. With a carnivore diet, it's the complete opposite. I mean, I dare a lot of people to eat a 24 ounce steak. Like I would pay for that steak if, if I had a friend in front of me that has never eaten like a carnivore diet and he says, oh, I'm gonna be able to eat that. I would pay for his steak if he was in front of me and I told him, hey, this is fully cooked. It's 24 ounces at the time of being cooked. So about, it could be about 28 ounces before cooking and stuff like that. But trust me, he would have an insanely hard time. I've tried it and I haven't been able to get through the entire thing, but the most I've been able to eat in one sitting was two and a half pounds of meat, almost three. But that's because I was doing really heavy exercising and I was doing a bunch at work and those were the only times that I could eat that much amount of food. And trust me, you will know when it's time to stop. It's a very different feeling from being stuffed from eating too much carbs, as opposed to just having too much meat. Having too much meat will definitely feel like, okay, this is enough versus that feeling that you get when you ate too much and that you have to rest and then just like, okay, I need a moment to pass out and like to digest all that food. It's not the same feeling. So trust me, you will know when you've had enough food. And then obviously along with this comes the very common question of, well, 
I'm pretty sure I'm gonna gain weight with this diet. It just sounds like I'm gonna be eating like a pig. Well, I'm happy to say that people tend to report that within the first two to three weeks, they end up losing somewhere between six to 10 pounds. Yes, some of that is water weight, but a lot of it is also fat or a good portion of it is fat. And if anything, if you do gain any weight, a lot of people actually tend to report as along with that, that they actually gain muscle. Yes, meat is one of the building blocks of muscle, trust me. And so a lot of people tend to report that they start getting a lot of muscle, they start seeing a lot of improvements in their health, they start getting a lot more energy. And it's because a lot of these people ate a bunch of carbs before. And as we know, a lot of carbs aren't super like whatever they do have, whatever nutrients, whatever vitamins they do have, they are not super bioavailable most of the time. There is a couple that do have some bioavailability, but for the most part, any piece of meat will usually have a lot more than whatever most carbs have. And so these people start to report really good energy levels. They start to report a bunch of positives, muscle gains and all this. And it's due to this red meat that they're consuming organ meats, shellfish, eggs, all of it goes into the carnivore diet and it all helps out. So could you gain weight? Yes, but it would probably be the good weight. Now, could you also lose weight? Absolutely, it's also in the cards. And finally, one of the other questions that I usually get, this is kind of a little bit of a gray area uh, overall, is if I do a carnivore diet, do I have to, have to, have to eat organ meats in order to make it through the entire thing without feeling like crap, you know? And it's a good question. Well, the answer to that is it depends. Many people have reported different things and it all varies. A lot of people have reported that they don't need to eat organ meats and that they feel fine, that they feel great. And a lot of people such as Sean Baker, he does not eat organ meats at all. He has tried them, but he says he hasn't felt any considerable or significant difference. However, there's other people such as Ben Greenfield, Paul Saladino, health coach Kate, myself included, and a bunch of other people that have reported that it makes a massive difference, but it all depends on whoever you're asking. And if you are gonna try out the carnivore diet and if you are gonna include organ meats, kind of assess for yourself. And I'm not a doctor or anything like that, but what I would do is I would go ahead and give it a trial for a week without the organ meats and then for a week try it out with some organ meats. Liver is a pretty good example. Tripe is another one that I've used quite often and I do like. Tongue is also pretty awesome amongst many, many others. And they are super nutritious. They're super high in vitamins and minerals. And trust me guys, you will get all that you need from them. But again, it's not something that is drawn as a must, but even in the animal kingdom, you see that a lot of animals actually kill their prey and they take only the organ meats because these animals know that there that there is something good about the organs. It happens a lot with bears, it happens a lot with wolves and many, many others. In ancient civilizations, the organ meats were given to the woman that were carrying babies or were given to the leader of whoever was the person in charge. So if that tells you anything, I mean, I leaned a little bit more towards using organ meats here and there all the time, as opposed to not using them at all. But I think the overall idea in this is just get some quality meat into your body and you should be able to do just fine. It, make your own decision and take it from there. And I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a bonus question. That bonus question is gonna be, do I have to buy organic in order for this to work? Again, there's people that have reported that there's very little to no variance from corn-fed versus organic pasture-raised beef. In my experience with this, to keep it as short as possible, because this could be a very, very long answer, the higher quality the meat, the better. Obviously, if your pocket can't afford it, I would rather elect to try this carnivore diet out than not try it out at all. So if all you have is corn fed beef, try it out. See how it feels for you. If you can afford a little bit better meat and you want to go for that organic stuff, be my guest. There is a lot of science backing up that there is a lot more vitamins and minerals in animals that have been grass fed, grass finished. And therefore, if you can afford the organic meat, Yes, I, I do definitely lean that you go towards the organic as it does have a lot more 
vitamins and minerals that we can all use specially on this carnivore diet. But if you can't afford it, don't sweat it. Just give it a shot, try it out and see how it goes. But that is it for today, guys. Thanks for joining me on another episode of Sage Experience. Please go ahead, comment, like, and subscribe. You guys know the deal. Push that notification bell if you haven't already done so. And push that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Yeah, that's actually first. Subscribe first, then push the notification bell. And give this video a thumbs up if you really like it. Just, just push it. Don't, don't mess around with it. But that is it for tonight, guys. Zay out. Peace.